Growing up, I always had a subtle interest in technology, but I never really saw it as something I wanted to do for a career. I just saw computers as an important part of everyday life, and if I wanted to be successful in my career, then I should probably know a little bit about computers. And now, today, I love software development. It's what I do for a career. But I'm not a traditional software engineer at an eight to five company. Instead, I've learned to earn money in unconventional ways, such as through my YouTube channel, creating content, and just working on whatever projects I find interesting. I also make money through sponsors, such as the sponsor of today's video, Embarcadero C++ Builder. Let me tell you, C++ Builder is the IDE of choice if you're looking to build cross-platform visual applications. You can take data sources and easily bind those to visual components so you can have data-driven applications with ease. Man, do I wish I knew about C++ Builder when I was first starting to learn how to code. That would have made it a lot easier. You can get started with a free trial following the link below. So thank you for sticking through that sponsored message. Now let's get back to my little story here. So growing up, I had an interest in technology, but I wasn't on fire for it. And then fast forward to my first development job at age 19, I still wasn't on fire for programming and technology, which is interesting because most people, you know, they're really, really interested in, in coding and then they go seek out a job. It didn't really work out that way for me anyways. I actually wasn't 100% convinced that software development was the career for me. I saw it as a really cool job, I saw it as very engaging, and I saw it as a really good means to an income. It wasn't until a year or so into that job that I finally started to realize that this coding thing, this really is what I'm meant to do. <sighs> Hitting me up on Discord now, Claire? Such a crazy lady. I'm just, I cannot believe she did that. So I'm gonna talk about what changed to make me actually really enjoy software development. But first, I just wanted to mention that when I started to realize that the software development route was for me, I decided to go to school for computer science. Now, not everybody needs to take that route. I don't really recommend it for everybody either, but I knew that's something I wanted to do because it was always one of my goals to get at least a bachelor's degree. And having jumped around from a few different majors, this one I was 100% committed on. I told myself, even if I wanna do something else in the future, I'm going to get my bachelor's degree in this, and then if I really wanna change, then I can pursue additional training. But I knew that I just needed to finish and not just jump around from major to major for the rest of my life and then eventually drop out. <laughs> it seems like a lot of people do that. So I knew I didn't wanna do that. I wanted to finish a bachelor's degree. And having some of that software development experience under my belt was actually really helpful throughout this because I worked in software development throughout my whole entire program of schooling. And that included an internship as well as a remote software development job, a different one actually. I left the first company when I went to school because they wanted someone who was working on this full time at that point. And I really didn't want to commit to a full time job and full time school. So I parted ways with that and switched to a part time internship. So where most people just go into computer science school expecting a degree to get be like this magical key to a six figure career. I instead approached it as just another form of validation, but my true skills and my true ability to get a job was going to come from learning how to code and getting that work experience. So I worked through the entire, except one semester. There was one semester where I didn't work because I was currently looking for a job at that point. So now I wanna talk about why it took me over a year to, of this first job to really start getting interested in coding, realizing, hey, this is the career I wanna do for the rest of my life. Why did it take a year for that to happen? And what caused it to happen? Well, a few reasons why it took me so long is the first thing is I didn't really feel confident in the code. So I struggled with coding a lot. And those negative emotions were, were attaching to coding. So now I was even liking it less at the beginning. And second thing, I was in isolation. So this was starting out was a part-time remote position 
which, you know, is very nice. But I didn't have coworkers even online that I could talk to. I was pretty much the only one. So most of my time was just spent at home reading books and studying stuff on Stack Overflow. And the third thing is that in general, my interests are cyclical. I think that's a word, but basically I would get really excited about it and then it would kind of die off. And then a little bit later, I'd get really excited about it and it would die off. And I am still that way today. I felt like if it was a career for me, then I would need to be on fire for coding 24 seven. But the reality is I've never really felt that way for longer than a few weeks. In reality, it's more of this general interest over time. And then I get some spikes and some dips. And that's just how it works for me. Other people are different. If you feel, you know, you're 100% passionate about coding, then I encourage you to just go all in. But just be careful not to burn out and just to also look at the longer, bigger picture. Having that first job, though, did help me stay consistent with coding, which allowed me to maintain that interest over a longer period of time. And over time, I started to have more victories in code than I had disappointments, and that made it more enjoyable. And then I eventually had more enjoyment in it that I was able to say, hey, this is the career I want. Sort of like if you're cooking and you burn every single meal, you're not really going to want to cook ever again. However, as you start to make some good meals and you're not burning them and they taste good, then you're starting to enjoy cooking and you want to do it more. Well, that's exactly how coding worked for me. And it took me about a year of coding to get to that point. And before that year, I had some experience with coding because I was still doing my YouTube channel and just experimenting with stuff. But it took me a year of professional work to feel a little bit confident and start to get into the, uh, the swing of things, I guess. So once the victories in code were more than the defeats and the disappointment, that is when I finally realized, hey, I actually do enjoy this and I want to pursue this for the rest of my career. So now I wanna talk about how I got that first job. Right before I took the job, I told myself, hey, I wanna take a little bit of a break and just focus on my YouTube channel and just take it easy, not stress out. This is an important time in my life. You know, I, I'm young, I just graduated high school, I was just getting to know Aaron at the time. I didn't really wanna stress myself out with some really complex full-time job. But then this job opportunity popped up through a mutual friend and it was a part-time remote position. It was pretty much perfect. You know, I still had enough free time that I could do pretty much whatever I wanted. You know, I was only working 20 hours a week on this company and it was remote. So I didn't have to drive anywhere. I didn't have to have a car. So it was really, really nice for the situation I was in. So that kind of built the foundation of why I took this job. And this person found me through a mutual contact, but ultimately they saw my work I was doing on YouTube and online and saw potential in what I was doing. At first I was like, no, this job seems cool, but it's just really not for me. I really just want to focus on this YouTube channel. I think deep down I knew that was the career path I wanted to take was a content creator, but I did agree to meet with the person and long story short, I came home with the job. So at some point in there, I was convinced to take this job. And I think it was mainly just the pay because at that point I've only ever worked a minimum wage job and they were offering $18 an hour. So I was like, dang, man, I'm going to be rich. So when I heard $18 an hour in my brain, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this and we're going to make it work. And then six or seven years later today, I am still coding regularly. That job really helped me build that foundation of coding on a daily or you know, a couple times a week basis. So I just wanted to make this video for a few of you who have been reaching out saying I'm discouraged or I, I get tired of coding, I like it, but it's hard or it burns me out. I just wanted to encourage you that it does take a lot of time. And if you're in the situation where you think it's the career path for you, but you're not entirely sure, give it some more time. Everybody takes a different amount of time. You know, I know people that just click with it and then other people take a lot of time to really get into the pattern and build those skills over time. If you're a year in and you still absolutely hate coding, <laughs> then you might wanna consider a different career path. If you hate it, there's no point in forcing yourself to like it. However, if it's like this love-hate relationship and you want to like coding, then I think there's still potential for you and don't give up. Worst case scenario, just take an hour each morning to study coding uninterrupted, no cell phones, no talking to people, probably not music, and just study through some book or some course or series from beginning to end 
And over time, those skills are going to compound and you're going to become more comfortable. And I, I'll bet you an hour of focused work is going to get you a lot more progress than five hours of unfocused work in school, playing on your laptop, on Facebook, or whatever it might be. So it does take a lot of focused time to make progress with this stuff. And if you're given some kind of opportunity to get involved in coding or technology, I suggest taking that. Even if you're young and it's not a job necessarily, maybe you're just helping build the website for a local church, or maybe you're 16 and you take on a part-time job, or maybe you're 18 and you just want to dive in full-time in a job. I encourage you to try to get that real-world experience because that's going to go on the resume, it's going to help you become more consistent, and it's going to help you like coding long term. So that's just what I wanted to talk about in this video. If you're new to this channel, then I'd appreciate a subscription. <laughs> so be sure to hit the, the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video. And just out of curiosity, let me know your story of getting your first development job. Was it all beautiful or was it really rough? I would just like to hear your story.